Now we are going to make our second design. It's going to be one that uses typography in an actual Japanese font. In Illustrator, you can put multiple artboards within a single file, so I recommend doing that here. On the left second from the button, we have the artboard tool. It shows you different types of artboards, all with different sizes. From here, please choose the letter artboard. This makes a letter size artboard appear on screen. We are going to make our design here. First, we are going to put our text in. To do so, choose the button on the left that says T, and either tap it twice or press it and hold it. This will bring up a tool for putting vertical Japanese text. Using this is super easy. When you want to change the size too, there is a tab that allows you to do that in the property panel on the right. Just drag it left and right like this. You can also change the text size from the common actions panel below by doing the same as before. To change the font, we go to the font tab on the right. What's great about this is that it shows you a preview of how the different fonts will look with your own text. This makes your work really easy and efficient. Now you have Adobe fonts which are fonts that Adobe offers as part of the program, and they're all listed in one column. Just press them and they're immediately applied to your text. If you already know which font you want to use, you can also search for it. There's no need to install other font apps either. You can do it all from within Illustrator, so go ahead and give it a try. Today we'll be going with a font called TVUD Mincho STD. It's a pretty serious looking bold font, but it also has a certain gentleness to it. We are going to edit and decorate it to make our very own style. To do so, first we need to make it into pass. So with the text selected, go to the T button on the right, third from the button. Then we'll press this Add Outline button here. Now what used to be text has now been completely converted into pass data. It also becomes a group. If you go to the layer panel and open up the groups, you can see each letter is converted separately, but then they're grouped into one thing. We are going to just quickly dissolve the group. To do this, go to the Common Actions panel and press the Group button. It's the third from the right. This gets rid of the group and lets us move each letter around individually. We are going to make this part that says Popular in Japanese to make it stand out and shift the part that says Veneer in Japanese to the left. The next thing to do is edit each of the letters one by one. If you double press this me character here, it lets you fiddle with the pass. Now we have points called anchor points, which you can press and move around like this. For example, we have this corner part here that's pretty sharp, but I want to make it more of a smooth curve. To do this, we extend it upwards and choose the corner part. Then we use the corner tool, the little circle here, and drag it to create a more gentle circular curve. We do the same with the top. Just choose the tool and drag it. This lets you make a nice round curve. You don't need to know anything about paths to do this either. You can see we have a lot of these sharp edges, but we'll make them more round with the corner tool. With this key part here, I actually want to erase the X mark. To do this, we need to turn off Compound Pass. Choose the character and select Disable Compound Pass from the property panel on the right. This divides the character into even smaller parts. 
and we can choose only the X mark and press delete in the common actions panel. From here we are going to keep adding little embellishments. First we are going to add a shape to this character here. For this we use the pencil tool, it's the fourth from the top in the left toolbar. Let's choose the color first. How about red this time? To illustrate, let's just draw a random circle. The program actually creates the outline of the shape using pass. Even if it's a weird shape, it all gets turned into pass. Using this, let's add some shapes to the first character. If you want to change the shape you just made, it's the same thing. Double tap the shape, and with all the paths showing, go ahead and drag them, then the parts, and use the corner tool as you can see. Now for the second character, I'm going to put a flower right here. First, using the shape tool, make a single red circle, like this. With this selected, choose the button at the bottom on the right side and select Repeat Radio. And there we go. It puts new little circles all around like that. By dragging this button on the right up and down, we can change the number of circles. Feel free to change the size as well. And now that we've got this part done, why don't we fill the middle in too? Put a circle right there in the middle and fill it up. Right now, the repeat radial circles in the middle circle is split up, but let's stick them into a group. Select both of them and then press the group button below. Then we'll put in one more repeat radial. This time, choose a rectangle shape and like this, make a kind of slender little pole. Once you're done, select it and press repeat radio at the bottom right like before. With the empty center as its focal point, you have a bunch of poles arranged into a circle. Let's make this smaller and put it into the center. With this, our typography is pretty much done. Now I just finish up by picking a color for the background and adding a few more touches. We are going to copy the flower I just made using the copy function in common actions and move it upwards. We know that we can change the color by double tapping it. We are going to change it and make the surrounding canvas more vibrant so that it all fits together into a super cute poster. And now we are finished. I'll just talk a bit more about exporting before we end. If you press the export button at the top right here, you can choose between different formats. You can choose the formats you usually use on the desktop version, as well as PIN and PSD formats. This time we are going to export in a PIN file and save it in our camera app. Click on save fixture, and we'll find our two artboards saved in our camera app here. How did you enjoy our two-part adventure? It's much easier than people think to make designs like this, so please give a try yourself. Even without knowing about paths or video curves, you can make great designs using vectors. 
For vector designs, there is Affinity Designer, which is an app I always talk about, but it's kind of difficult to make video curves and stuff with it. So if you had trouble with Affinity Designer, feel free to try Illustrator for iPad. And if you have Illustrator on your laptop too, when you save Illustrator files on your iPad, you automatically move them to your laptop. So just open the program on your laptop and your iPad files will just pop up. You don't need to move each one over using AirDrop or something. So if you already have the complete additional Illustrator, I really recommend using this. But anyway, that's all for today. If you like this video, please hit the like button down below. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, I make videos on tips and hacks on iPads, so please do that too. And I hope to see you in my next video. Bye bye!